Welcome to our endocrinology series. This video is on Cushing syndrome. It is defined as clinical abnormalities caused by glucocorticoid excess due to increased adrenal cortisol production or long-term glucocorticoid therapy. Take note that Cushing syndrome is not the same thing as Cushing disease. Instead, Cushing disease is Cushing syndrome caused by pituitary adrenocorticotropic hormone excess. Cushing syndrome may occur iatrogenic due to a long-term glucocorticoid therapy, which is rather common, or non-iatrogenic, such as, as Cushing's disease. This makes up up to 60% of Cushing syndrome. As previously mentioned, this presents with pituitary adrenocorticotropic hormone excess. Other causes of increased adrenal cortisol production include adrenal neoplasm and ectopic ACTH production. This can be caused by neoplasms of the lung, pancreas, kidney, thyroid and thymus. Here you can see non-iatrogenic etiologic factors. Please pause the video to take a closer look. Signs and symptoms include hypertension, central obesity, round or moon face, thin extremities, hirsutism, menstrual irregularities, hypogonadism and skin fragility, as well as red-purple abdominal stria, acne, poor wound healing, ecchymosis, hair loss, facial pleothora, hyperpigmentation, buffalo hump, proximal muscle weakness or wasting, edema in the extremities, depression, psychosis, emotional lability, and paranoia. Complications include obesity, possibly causing obstructive sleep apnea, myopathy and intestinal motility abnormalities, which may cause aspiration pneumonia and respiratory depression, venous thromboembolic events, and cardiac dysfunction. The differential diagnoses are alcoholic pseudo-Cushing syndrome, obesity due to diabetes mellitus, and adrenogenital syndrome. To diagnose the condition, late-night salivary cortisol can be measured. Here, a single midnight serum cortisol level that is higher than 7.5 mcg per deciliter is indicative of Cushing syndrome. This is up to 96% sensitive and 100% specific. Normally, a nadir is observed around midnight due to diurnal variation. However, this test is not useful in patients with inconsistent sleep patterns, tobacco use, and in patients using topical corticosteroid application. A screening test for Cushing syndrome is an overnight dexamethasone suppression test. For this, one milligram of dexamethasone is taken per os at 11 p.m. Then the plasma cortisol level is measured at 8 a.m. To exclude Cushing syndrome, the plasma cortisol level at 8 a.m. should be less than 5 mcg per 100 milliliter. 24-hour urine-free cortisol and creatinine measurements can be done if the dexamethasone test suggests Cushing syndrome. Creatinine is used to ensure the collection is adequate and an increased 24-hour urinary-free cortisol is present if it exceeds 100 mcg per 24 hours. A cortisol excretion greater than 300 mcg per 24 hours can be used to diagnose Cushing syndrome. High-dose dexamethasone test and measurement of ACTH by radioimmunoassay can determine the cause of Cushing syndrome. An undetected or decreased ACTH with no suppression indicates an adrenal cause. A normal 
or increased ACTH with no suppression indicates an ectopic ACTH production and a normal or increased ACTH and partial suppression indicates Cushing disease, that is, pituitary excess. Differential diagnosis of hormonal values seen in Cushing syndrome can be seen in this table. Please stop the video to take a closer look. Other methods to diagnose Cushing syndrome include bilateral inferior petrosal sinus sampling, which is used to distinguish Cushing disease from ectopic ACTH syndrome. Further laboratory findings include hypokalemia, hypochloremia, hyperglycemia, hypercholesterolemia, and metabolic alkalosis. Imaging. CT or MRI of the adrenal glands is indicated if adrenal Cushing syndrome is suspected. An MRI of the pituitary glands is indicated if pituitary Cushing syndrome is suspected. And if neoplasm is suspected, an image of the lung, pancreas, kidney, thyroid and thymus are needed. Treatment is performed by surgery to remove the tumor. Pituitary adenoma warrants transsphenoidal microadenomectomy. If the condition is not cured by this, or in children, pituitary irradiation can be used. If the condition is not cured by this either, then total bilateral adrenalectomy is performed. Adrenal neoplasm will need surgical resection of the affected adrenal, as well as glucocorticoid replacement for about 9 to 12 months, so the contralateral adrenal gland can recover from prolonged suppression. In non-surgical candidates, suppression of the adrenal steroid production by ketoconazole administration is used. An alternative is mifepristone, an antiprogestin, which can control hyperglycemia secondary to hypercortisonism in adults with endogenous Cushing syndrome. However, it should be avoided in women who could become pregnant. Bilateral adrenal hyperplasia will require bilateral total adrenalectomy, while ectopic ACTH indicates surgical resection of the ACTH secreting tumor. To control the excess cortisol, the following medications may be prescribed. Meturapone, aminoglutathymide, mifepristone, and ketoconazole to control the mineralocorticoid effect of cortisol and 11 deoxycorticosteroid spironolactone may be used. Bilateral adrenalectomy is needed if tumors are indolent and unresectable. The prognosis is good if the tumor can be removed. Please note that screening for multiple endocrine neoplasia type 1 is indicated if Cushing disease is diagnosed. This video was part of our endocrinology series and it was on Cushing syndrome.